It seems like everyone is buying Sony cameras and nearly everyone is selling Sony LUTs. So if you own a Sony camera and you shoot in log, should you buy them or just use the free one from Sony? To find out, I bought a bunch of them and today we're gonna test them out so that you can decide if they're worth it and what might be best for you. And if you stay to the end, you'll see my favorite, which is what you're looking at right now. But first, what is a LUT? A LUT stands for lookup table, but basically it just takes your footage and changes the colors and the contrast, kind of like a video filter. When I was growing up, the only options on cameras I remember is sepia, hello. But now the options are endless. There are two basic types of LUTs, technical and creative. The technical LUTs will take flat looking footage, often for specific cameras, and transform it into something normal and realistic looking. The creative LUTs will take that normal and realistic image and transform it into something, well, creative. Or sometimes a creative LUT is designed to take that flat looking log footage directly into something creative, like a color grading combo meal deal. Creative LUTs can be applied to any camera, ideally. So today we're gonna focus on the technical LUTs to find which ones do the best job of creating that normal and realistic image for your Sony. Caleb Pike, AKA DSLR video shooter, has a technical LUT pack specifically for S-Log3 on the Sony a7S3 for 1995 taking that log footage into something like this. Now, Sony provides free technical love packs for S-Log2 and S-Log3 intended to do the same thing. So what's the difference? A good way to tell what a LUT is doing is by looking at the vector scope in your editing software. The vector scope is labeled with colors red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta, and will show you a signal with all the hues and saturation in your image. If a technical LUT is accurate, the vector scope should line up with each color with this color checker. The more you see the signal in one direction, like in this case blue, I just blew myself. <laughs> the more blue you have in your image. The vector scope will also tell you the saturation in your image. As we head out towards the boxes, the more saturated those colors are. The small box here is broadcast safe saturation for TV, and the larger box is complete saturation. Going back to that vector scope, the line here is the skin tone line, and generally we want our skin on this line for any type of natural looking skin. Of course, you can have skin be whatever color you want for stylistic choices, but especially when looking at a technical LUT, you want those skin tones to look natural. You can see Sony's skin tone line is shifted a little too yellow, and in general, the yellow is shifted a little towards green. It kind of makes my skin look like there's something wrong with my liver, which there isn't, I think, I hope. And that's why Caleb's LUT looks so much better. In fact, of all the ones I tested, this one is the most color accurate. Although it doesn't have a bunch of saturation or contrast built in, actually the least of all the ones I tested. So it gives you the opportunity to add those in to get a finished image. Also, if you do want a little less red looking skin, included in Caleb's packs are LUTs for shifting skin tones towards yellow and for overexposure, which is a popular way of shooting log footage to minimize noise. About overexposure, most technical LUTs are designed to be applied to footage that's properly exposed. All you do is drop your footage into an editing software, and in the case of Premiere, add an adjustment layer and apply your technical LUT to the adjustment layer. If you do like to overexpose your footage, all you do is go into that footage layer and lower the exposure down until the LUT looks good. That is unless you buy the Leaming LUT. The Leaming LUTs are available for nearly every camera and nearly every picture profile, but they work a little differently. They're made to be applied to footage that's exposed to the right, or ETTR. So how does ETTR work? Well, instead of exposing your image normally, you instead push that histogram all the way to the right just before the highlights are blown out. Now in camera, this looks weird, but once you apply the leaming LUT, hey, it looks good. This method is used to reduce noise and maximize detail, so if you like to overexpose your footage, this might be the LUT for you. The leaming LUT has quite a bit more saturation than both the free one from Sony and Caleb's, and the yellow is a little bit shifted towards green, but in general, it's a very color accurate LUT and the skin looks great. Also, if you like the saturation and contrast built in in a final image in one click, this does that. The Phantom LUT takes your S-Log3 s Gamut 3 Cine footage and emulates the Ari Alexa LUT. You know, those cameras that are used on a bunch of movies no one's ever heard of? Because this is an emulation, this is slightly less accurate than the others from a strict color point of view, as evidenced by the blues being pushed a little bit towards cyan. Also, according to the website, there's some nonlinear saturation happening with the greens. So that's pretty interesting. Beyond the colors, the gamma curve of the Alexa LUT has been emulated, giving gentle highlight roll off into white and fall off into black. Skin tones are pretty great too, and there's no need to overexpose with this LUT, which I prefer. Saturation and contrast levels are pretty similar to the free Sony LUT, and included in the pack, is a LUT for tungsten lighting and some others that are pretty cool too. Overall, this seems like a more saturated and filmic version of Caleb's LUT. 
And finally, Mattia Poya's new Cine LUTs for Sony combines 10 technical LUTs with five creative LUTs for 50 bucks. For the technical LUTs, if you're using a Sony camera with S-Log2, S-Log3, S-Gamma3 Cine, or S-Cinetone, he's got you covered. Here's the S-Log3 compared to the others. I would say this image looks way more dominant towards the magenta and reds than the others, and that includes skin tones, and it's way more saturated than most of them, but similar to the Leeming LUT. And if you watch Maddie's videos, I think that makes sense. To me, this and the Leeming LUT are great for that contrasty, saturated image, only with this LUT, you don't have to overexpose. Maddie's creative LUTs that come with the pack actually pair really well with the technical LUTs, and I actually think they make them look better. I really like this orange and teal one. It's amazing how different all these look, isn't it? So. Let me know in the comments what you use and what your favorite is. For me, I have two favorites. For the price, the DSLR video shooter LUT is pretty hard to beat. Great skin tones, accurate color, and it just needs some saturation and contrast to finish the image. I also like the addition of the adjusting skin tone LUTs and for overexposure if that's your thing. But my absolute favorite and what you're looking at right now is the Phantom LUT. It really makes your mirrorless camera look like a $50,000 camera for less than 50 bucks. Pretty hard to beat. Easy to use, all you do is set proper exposure, and speaking of, if you need to learn how to set proper exposure, just click here.